Therefore, we desire to raise the levels of investment. Mr. Speaker, sir, investment is critical not only for production of goods and services and infrastructure development, but also is a conduit for job creation as well as skills and technological by the value of projects negotiated standing at more than 15 billion US dollars. I now turn to tax for jobs. Government has opened up consultations with the private sector with the view of identifying strategies for promoting job creation in the economy. For its part, Treasury stands ready to put in place a taxation regime targeting job creation especially incentivizing investors, corporates, and entrepreneurs. I now turn to manufacturing, Mr. Speaker. Sir. The manufacturing sector is a major source of job creation and foreign currency earnings. It also provides scope for diversification, that, that way cushioning the economy from various market risks. Mr. Speaker, sir, while industry capacity utilization is average around 40%, the 2019 budget process uh, uh, proposes implementation of measures to address the challenges faced by the manufacturing sector and help raise capacity utilization levels further. It is imperative that we revive, transform and grow the existing industry that will pushing up pro uh, uh, productive capacity utilization. Specific measures proposed through the Transitional Stabilization Program in this budget are as follows. Negotiate, uh, negotiation for affordable, medium, and long-term lines of credit. Promoting and strengthening value chains and linkages. Export promotion. Uh, creating a level playing field through removing distortions and, and promotion of competitiveness. And finally, the establishment of a venture fund for retooling industry. Critically, this budget lays the foundation uh, for the resuscitation of our local industry, including Zisco Steel, the Coal Storage Commission, largely through much needed fiscal incentives and policy prescriptions. Mr. Speaker, sir, I propose an allocation of 47.6 million US dollars for the 2019 uh, uh, financial year for the Ministry of Industry and Commerce. Let me turn to small, medium enterprises, SMEs. In addition to macroeconomic consolidation, the TSP gives emphasis to investment and support to the SME sector, which absorbs a growing number
To implement the long-delayed parasitical reforms is these institutions ought to play a key role in transforming the economy among several drivers we need to enhance. Mr. Speaker, sir, following consultations, I place it on record that we're going ahead with rolling out our parasitical reforms on a rollout template which categorizes the entities under the following. State-owned enterprises to be partially privatized through JVs and all listings. Two, state-owned enterprises that, that are supposed to be fully privatized and state-owned enterprises uh, that are facing liquidation. And again, we have a table listing the, all, the, all the enterprises. The 2019 budget proposes the privatization of at least five public enterprises, namely Tel One, Net One, uh, uh, Telesel, uh, Zimpost, and the POSB. The 2019 budget assumes proceeds of at least $350 million uh, are being raised from such privatization. Mr. Speaker, sir, government will, however, refrain from taking over all or part of the debts that entities have accrued, uh, as not all debt is risky to potential investors. I now turn to agriculture and the area of food security, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, development and transformation of the country is to a large extent dependent on our capacity and ability to produce and attain food security. Furthermore, agriculture is a critical sector which sustains the rest of industry and contributes significantly to livelihoods, employment, export and export earnings for the country. Therefore, the 2019 budget prioritizes support through facilitation of partnership with financial institutions in credit financing to our farms under government schemes and contract farming, as well as support to vulnerable households. Furthermore, the budget supports irrigation development, mechanization, and subsidy arrangements in grain marketing. The other specific measures are as follows. Rollout of the revised 99-year lease uh, to facilitate private sector financing to the rest of the farmers. <laughs> Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, ma'am. <laughs> Madam Speaker, ma'am, the other specific measures are as follows. Rollout of the revised 99A list to facilitate private sector financing to the rest of the farmers. Adopt, we adopt measures to address, that address low productivity in agriculture, including addressing land utilization. Dealing with price distortions by bench, benchmarking to, to import parity, to finalize setting up of a commodities exchange, hence opening up space to private sector players, thus shifting the burden from the fiscus. Implementing a robust loan recovery system to promote rollover of financing, restructure the grain marketing board and separate, and separate accounts between the strategic grain reserve and commercial activities while safeguarding food security and price stability observance of the rule of law, property rights, and BIPAs, promoting outgrower schemes by the private sector, and crowding in financial institutions. Mr. Speaker, sir. Madam Speaker, ma'am. I propose an allocation of $989.3 million to the Minister of Lands, Agriculture, Water, Climate, and rural resettlement. <laughs> Compensation to former white farm owners. Government is committed to finalizing the issue of compensation to former white, white farm owners who are affected by the land reform program in accordance, in accordance with the country's law and commitments under the various bilateral agreements and the constitution. The government has put in place structures to determine the extent of the government's obligations. This work is ongoing and will be finalized in the next few months. Cognizance, cognizance is being given to the fact that 
the resources required to compensate and put closure to this important issue are obviously beyond the capacity of the fiscals. In this regard, various mobilization strategies and finance mechanisms are being explored in consultation with all stakeholders. In the interim, the 2019 budget proposes to avail $53 million towards payment of compensation to former white uh, uh, farm owners whose disbursement will be targeted. I now turn to infrastructure uh, development. Madam Speaker, ma'am, I now turn to infrastructure development. The key driver for economic transformation is infrastructure development. Accordingly, it is critical that more resources are reoriented towards infrastructure development programs. Madam Speaker, ma'am, I put it uh, in Margaret Thatcher's uh, words, the former British Prime Minister. She said, you and I come by road or rail, but economies travel on infrastructure. Therefore, the 2019 budget seeks to address infrastructure gaps and give support to key enablers for transformation, which are critical for reducing cost of doing business and supportive of industry and commerce. The target is to allocate 12.6% of total budget to infrastructure development programs. This is excluding agriculture infrastructure, which is catered for elsewhere. And this is up from 10.2% in the previous year's budget. Drawing from the TSP, the following projects will be accorded high priority with their execution being tracked by cabinet under the 100-day uh, program cycle. Dualization and upgrading of, of Harare, a bright road, recognizing uh, that, uh, after all, a road is an economy. The expansion of Wanke 7 and 8, expansion of the Robert Gabriel Mugabe International Airport, upgrading and modernization of the Bybrid Border Post, Kunzu Dam and convincing infrastructure, Gwai Shangani Dam and convincing infrastructure, and the Lupani Provincial Hospital. Madam Speaker, ma'am, I propose to allocate the following resources under the 2019 bud budget to the respective infrastructure ministries as follows. Ministries of Energy and Power Development, I allocate, we allocate 16 million US dollars. The Ministry of Transport and Infrastructure Development, 399 million US dollars. The Ministry of Information, <laughs> Communication, Information, Communication Technology and Cyber Security will allocate 17.9 million US dollars. Focus is also being given to addressing existing and emerging infrastructure gaps which have put the lives of the public at risk, particularly in the areas of water and sanitation, uh, to which of the overall allocation is 214.5 million US dollars, and to the road network rehabilitation program, of which the allocation is 396 point million US dollars. Government will employ a deliberate thrust to leverage and crowd in a private sector participation in the financing and implementation of projects, particularly the local private sector. Government has adopted public-private pri public -private partnership mod models, PPPs, for infrastructure development and other turnaround strategies for tertiary institutions into uh, uh, self-sustaining centers of excellence with potential uh, export of, of education, oh, ex export of education services. Key initiatives include the following, setting up of industrial parks, establishment of innovation hubs and spin-off of industries, incubation of science and technology-based industries, and promoting promotion of research and development for modernization and industrialization. Madam Speaker, ma'am, Treasury has prepared the 2019 infrastructure investment plan as well as part of the 2019 budget uh, documents, and this is available upon request. I now turn to the issue of devolution, Madam Speaker, ma'am. The 2019 national budget seeks to operationalize support for provinces on the basis of section 264 of the Constitution 
uh, pertaining to, uh, to provision of 5% of government revenues to provincial councils. An estimated 310 million US dollars in, in fiscal transfers is earmarked for support to provincial councils for 2019. As spelled out in the TSP, decentralization is a key strategy for fair and just governance. All provinces should be able to plan and implement their economic growth and development using their factor endowments, with central government contributing through the 5% allocation annually. For the 2019 fiscal uh, financial year, and in, the, uh, and, and in order to distribute uh, the amount uh, among provinces, an interim formula will be used, which is simplistic, uh, and the objective uh, are comprising the following uh, 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 components. One, uh, population profile. Two, poverty profile. And finally, infrastructure quality and deficit of infrastructure. To operationalize devolution, government has already approved the principles of the uh, <clears throat> Provincial Councils and Administration Amendment Bill, which spells out the mechanisms of decentralization and devolution. Actual allocations for 2019 will require cabinet approval at the beginning of the financial year, ensuring that the allocations uh, tar uh, uh, target uh, 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 and addresses pockets of marginalization in provinces and district. Madam Speaker, ma'am, government is cognizant of the urgent need to develop urban infrastructure as well, especially water and sanitation and urban roads. Therefore, government will facilitate stronger partnerships among relevant departments, respective local authorities, and development partners in addressing infrastructure deficiencies in urban areas. Treasury is also embarking on a program to enhance financial and accounting capacity of local authorities and the provincial councils to ensure transparency, accountability, uh, and so to ensure uh, transparency and accountability in the management of the public resources. The devolution strategy also embraces initiatives to facilitate uh, establishment of companies in various districts in line with the thrust to enhance production in respective provinces with the long established growth points uh, being, be, being epicenters of this development thrust. As per the undertaking of the TSP, Zimstats will be seized with the production of socio-economic statistics that will underpin assessment of the various provinces and local authorities' contribution to the overall national GDP, including special GDP figures. Madam Speaker, ma'am, I propose to allocate $179.9 million to the Ministry of Local Government, Public Works, and National Housing. This allocation is over and above the $310 million US dollars targeted under the fiscal transfer to provincial councils and local authorities I indicated earlier. Madam Speaker, ma'am, I now turn to human capital development. Human capital development is at the center of economic transformation. Rapid technical change, globalization, and economic liberalization in recent years requires us to prioritize skills development on healthcare as a key strategy for economic competitiveness and growth. The focus should therefore extend beyond uh, education career prospects to skills development. That way, tackling inequality and promoting socioeconomic mobility and growth. On education, Madam Speaker, ma'am, education provision remains key in driving the economy's future. The education sector strategy plan 2016 to 2020, which is in support of the Sustainable Development Goal 4, SDG 4, and the aspiration of the Paris Declaration on Education, which targets allocation of 20% of the national budget, inform the 2019 budget uh, a proposed allocation of $1.51 billion, broken down as follows. Minister of Primary and Secretary Education, an allocation of 
$1.32 billion U.S. dollars. And Minister of Higher and Tertiary Education, <laughs> Science and Technology Development, an allocation of $380.8 million U.S. dollars. The priority areas under higher and tertiary education include the following. Provision for construction of student accommodation and faculty blocks at Marondera, Manikaland, and Gwanda State Universities. Embracing joint venture initiatives for provision of decent accommodation at other institutions of higher learning. Support towards disadvantaged students who are, able, who are unable to access funding under the student loan facility, the EDGE loan. Provision for construction and equipping of laboratories at Mashingo and uh, Mkoba Teachers Colleges, as well as the Joshua Mkavu Nkomo Polytechnic College. S support towards research and development and provision for addressing cadetship programs uh, I repeat, provision for addressing partnership program areas. Government will support the Minister of Primary and Secondary Education in raising additional resources from third parties for infrastructure development. <laughs> on on health care, Madam Speaker, Ma'am, with regards to health care, the goal is to ensure that the four levels of care, that is primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary are supported with respect to infrastructure, equipment, and health supplies. Focus will also be ensuring that the referral system is re-established in order to reduce bottlenecks being experienced in ter tertiary and central hospitals. Support to the health sector will be accompanied, oh, sorry, will be complemented by, by the other interventions government is making in roads, water, sanitation provision, food security, among others, which have a bearing on the health status of our citizens. In general, government is desirous to see the development of a medical tourism industry in the country. Madam Speaker, ma'am, I propose an overall allocation of $694.5 million to the Ministry of Health and child care. I now turn to the issue of harnessing the demographic dividend. Economic transformation the world over now strategically puts ahead, uh, ahead programs geared towards embracing the youths in order to harness the demographic dividend arising from the educated, trained, and qualified youth. This is also getting credence uh, from the upper hand now associated with the digital economy, uh, anchored by, the, by, by ICT. We draw pride and hope on the massive growth potential to be attained through the demographic dividend and the digital economy. Madam Speaker, ma'am, in essence, uh, Vision 2030's aspiration stands to benefit more or more our youths of today. I now turn to the matter of social protection, Madam Speaker, Mayor. Our reform program necessitates that we give attention to social safety nets for vulnerable members of our society who end up being negatively affected as a result of implementation of austerity measures and other risks that they may encounter. The 2019 budget gives cognizance to the need for government to render restitutive justice by availing support to members of society deemed to be in need or deserving, consistent with the philosopher John Rawls' quote in, in his book entitled The Theory of Justice. In particular, I quote what he says in one paragraph, which is, the expectations of those with same abilities and aspirations should not be affected by their social class. Furthermore, I propose to allocate $81.2 million for the Minister of Public Service, Labor and Social Services, inclusive of $65.2 million towards provision of social, social safety nets. <laughs> Let me turn to the issue of natural resource manage, management, uh, Madam Speaker, ma'am. 
In order to attain economic transformation, it is critical that we manage the exploitation of our country's mineral and natural resources in a sustainable and beneficial manner. Responsi responsible ministries are expected to play guardian and oversight role to ensure that the country drives ma derives maximum benefit without compromising availability of the resources uh, to future generations. Madam Speaker, ma'am, the 2019 budget uh, proposes, to, proposes to prioritize allocation of resources as well as implementation of appropriate measures under the respective sectors of mining, wildlife management, tourism, as follows. And I start with mining. For improved performance of the mining sector, the TSP and this budget propose the following uh, deliberate policies across the sector. Review surrender requirements to ensure continued production across key minerals. This is surrender requirements in terms of forex surrender requirements. Dealing with mining claims that, that are held for speculative purposes. <laughs> Facilitating and incentivizing exploration. Zimbabwe is underexplored, Madam Speaker, ma'am. <laughs> Automated mining cadastre uh, information system, resuscitation of closed and the opening of new mines that have potential, the action and rollout plan for 22 assets under ZMDC, efficient and competitive mining tax environment, the mining tax regime needs to be dealt with, the development of artisanal and small-scale miners. We want to expedite transparent marketing of diamond stockpile under the Zimbabwe Consolidated Diamond Company and support it in order to maximize revenues. And finally, plugging leakages in the marketing of gold, including uh, the implementation of a robust monetary framework. <laughs> Turning to value addition and beneficiation, the, th the thrust is to add value and beneficiate more uh, through processing and refining of minerals and link processed and refined minerals to the manufactured sector, manufacturing sector rather, in order to industrialize. In this regard, government is finalizing the mineral value addition and beneficiation policy to improve domestic smelting and refining, to take advantage of the immediate scope for income and export generation offered by minerals such as platinum, chrome, lithium, nickel, copper, diamonds, gold, and coal. Turning to surrender requirements, Madam Speaker, ma'am, the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe has responded to the foreign currency supply challenges that had hit hard the mining sector operations, especially in the gold sector, by reviewing downwards the foreign currency surrender requirements threshold for large-scale gold miners to 45% from 70%, which will see miners retaining 55% of their foreign currency end. Government will continue um, to monitor developments in the sector. Turning to the mining cadastral information system, Madam Speaker, ma'am, under the 2018 budget, an allocation of 1.7 million was made towards the automation uh, uh, of, of the mining cadastral information system in order to ensure implementation of this. The requisite foreign currency required will be prioritized in the 2019 budget. Let me turn to the, the resuscitation of closed mines. Madam Speaker, ma'am, in 2019, it will be critical that closed mines such as Shabani Mashaba Mines, SMM, Elvington Gold Mine, Chegutu, Jena Gold Mine, and other ZMDC mines are targeted for reopening. The resuscitation program will involve own resources for some of the entities, while for others, joint venture partnerships arrangements will be pursued. On mining transparency, Madam uh, Speaker, ma'am, in order to move along with the international best practices on achieving transparency in management of natural resources, government will want to be a member of the extractive industries 
Transparency Initiative, EITI, as soon as possible. <laughs> Membership is critical in order for the country to benefit from strengthened public and corporate governance and the promotion of understanding of natural resource management and in providing data that guide uh, reforms for greater transparency and accountability in the extractive sector. Madam Speaker, ma'am, it is critical that we move along with other countries in this agenda, and, and, and hence I propose to allocate $15.4 million to the Ministry of Mines and Mining Development. I now turn to environment and tourism. On the environment, Madam Speaker, ma'am, the thrust with regard to environmental management is to deal with rampant deforestation with an estimated loss of 100,000 to 320,000 hectares of forest per year. Uh, solid waste management confronting uh, urban authorities throughout the country, destruction of wetlands, and many other risks to our environment. The budget, therefore, uh, continues to, to uh, capacitate local authorities and the Environmental Management Agency, EMA, to manage pollution, waste, and deforestation. Madam Speaker, ma'am, the Forestry Commission will now decentralize the issuance of tree cutting permits, while EMA will work closely with traditional leaders to enforce the proper management of forests and pasture lands countrywide. With regards to proceeds from the tobacco level, the decision is that this will be shared equally between TIMB and the Forestry Commission with effect uh, from 1 January 2019. These are to be uh, reinvested in our forestation programs in the tobacco growing areas. Government will also revitalize the Environment Fund, which can be used to contain water pollution and solid waste management. To avert, to avert outbreaks, of, uh, outbreaks like Coral and Typhoid in the future, the Environment Fund will act as an early warning signal and assist local authorities and communities in disaster management. Let me turn to small scale and artisanal uh, uh, mining activities. Unsustainable mining methods that are used by small scale and artisanal miners also cause damage to public infrastructure and in some cases violates rights of other landholders such as farmers. Without criminalizing the small scale and artisanal miners, the 2019 budget seeks to embrace interventions to reduce environmental, social and health impact that arise uh, from artisanal and small scale mining operations. As such, the Mining Loan Fund as a key funding tool for primary and small scale uh, producers will enhance a component for a better and sustainable mining methods. In addition, government is engaging fidelity printers and, and refiners to come up with a mechanism that compels recipients of other loans to rehabilitate the environment. I now turn to tourism. As the country transforms into an upper middle income economy, as espoused in Vision 2030, the contribution of service sectors to GDP will incre it increase more than traditional sectors in line with global, uh, with, with global trends. According to a report by the World Travel and Tourism Council, WTTC, Travel and Tourism Economic Impact 2018, the sector accounted for 10.4% of global GDP and 320 million jobs, or 9.9% of total employment in 2017. Some of the measures relevant for improved performance of the sector include the following. Review of the current fiscal incentive uh, framework to derive maximum benefit from the sector. Prioritize payment plan towards obligations to International Air uh, Transport Association, IATA, conclusion of the tourism satellite account in order to accurately account for tourism's contribution to GDP. Improve air connectivity to all tourist destinations around the country. Removal of visa requirements 
on key source markets, enhanced destination branding and marketing, and setting up of a tourism revolving fund. In this re regard, Madam Speaker, Ma'am, I propose to allocate 38.1 million to the Ministry of Environment, Tourism, and Hospitality Industry. Turning to wildlife management, poaching and loss of habitat remain the greatest threat to the country's wildlife resources. Government is therefore strengthening institutions related to the wildlife industry, such as impacts, to deal with rogue operators who continue to bring the industry into disrepute internationally. Individual farmers with low capacity for, for cropping, essentially in the southern uh, regions, can engage in wildlife ranching. These farmers will be assisted by government to form joint ventures with private sector on wildlife projects. I now turn, Madam Speaker, ma'am, to the issue of institutions and governance. Government is committed to promoting good governance based on the rule of law and respect for human rights, as well as accountability and transparency. Uh, upholding good governance and democracy is enshrined in our constitution, uh, 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 will facilitate our transformation to the desired upper middle income status. We need to agree that uh, largely uh, peaceful conduct of the, of the uh, 30th of July harmonized elections sowed a good seed for deepening our democracy. Accordingly, the alignment of Public Order and Security Act and Access to Information and Protection of Privacy Act to the Constitution is work in progress with responsible uh, ministries currently seized with the matter for deliberation through due process. Madam Speaker, ma'am, I propose to allocate 294.7 million in support of the Office of the President and Cabinet. I also propose to allocate $155 million for the Minister of Justice, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs. Madam Speaker, ma'am, for the seven constitutional commissions, namely Human Rights, Judicial Service, uh, National Peace and Reconciliation, Anti-Corruption, Electoral, uh, Gender, Land and Media, the proposed allocation amounts to $38.5 million. I'm also proposing to allocate resources to cater for the Judicial Service Commission, which is $27.6 million, the Public Service Commission, $279.3 million, as well as the National Prosecuting Authority, an allocation of $8.1 million. For the Ministry of Information and Publicity and Broadcasting Services, I propose uh, to allocate $17.9 million. Furthermore, I propose to allocate $330 million to the Ministry of Finance and Economic Development, of which $70.5 million is committed under the unallocated reserve. <laughs> Let me turn to the matter of globalization and foreign relations. <laughs> Madam Speaker, ma'am, government is consistently uh, proclaimed to its, government has consistently proclaimed its resolve to re-engage and integrate into the global village, hence the interest and um, commitment to re-engagement. This is out of a realization that through international isolation we have lost immensely as a nation, particularly through deprivation of access to international capital markets, technology, trade and others, in other areas, resulting in below potential and low economic growth. In order to catch up globally, we have, as His Excellency the President has repeatedly advocated, to leapfrog and double our efforts towards re-engagement through normalizing the country's relations with all countries and creditors, including the West. We look forward to rejoining the Commonwealth in due course as the pro this process is already uh, underway and has been initiated. <laughs> Most important is the ongoing reorientation of our diplomatic missions towards economic and trade diplomacy. The, bu the budget proposes rationalization of some of the missions in pursuit of this objective. 
I now turn to the matter of bilateral investment promotion and protection agreements, the peoples. Government uh, remains committed to protecting investments that fall under uh, bilateral investment promotion and protection agreements, BIPAs, as it forges ahead on protection of property rights. Consequently, the two BIPAs are waiting signature and 22 BIPAs under negotiation will go through both the approval and ratification processes in 2019. Let me turn to the, to the matter of diaspora engagement. The diaspora present a significant opportunity for contributing to the development of our economy. Uh, this, however, requires a clear policy that serves interests of both diasporans and, and, and the nation and government. The diaspora policy uh, is in its implementation phase and, and an implementation matrix is in place which states clearly the responsibility of the different line ministries and agencies in order to support the diaspora and tap into the opportunities they present. Diaspora engagement programs are ongoing through scheduled external visits to ensure that the diaspora span, diaspora's needs and expectations are known and embraced in the country's economic development agenda. Therefore, I propose and allocate a budget of 56.1 million to the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Trade. I now turn to the issue of peace and security. Madam Speaker, ma'am, of the key drivers for economic transformation in pursuit of our vision 2030, peace and security take center stage. The economic challenges that have been with us for over the past few years have without uh, exaggeration taken a toll on the state of our defense and law and order sectors. Madam Speaker, ma'am, I propose that through the 2019 budget we extend support towards the Ministries of Defense and War Veterans Affairs and Home Affairs and Cultural Heritage in the following aspects. Maintenance of existing equipment and facilities. Training and development. Re-equipment, refurbishment and upgrading of facilities. Research and development. Limited recruitment against natural attri attrition, war veterans welfare as per the relevant act, and rations and medical supplies. <laughs> Madam Speaker, ma'am, in the light of this, Treasury therefore is proposing to allocate 546.9 million for the Ministry of Defense and War Veterans. Similarly, a total of similarly, similarly a total of 517.8 million US dollars is allocated for the Minister of Home Affairs and Cultural Heritage. <laughs> Madam Speaker, ma'am, I now turn to the issue of voice and accountability. The 2019 budget prioritizes voice and accountability as embodied in our legislature as a strong driver for economic transformation for strong, sustained, and shared growth. In the course of implementation of reforms, governments rely on oversight by its citizenry through their elected representatives. It is on account of the uh, foregoing that I propose to allocate $89.1 million under Parliament. I believe that this allocation will strengthen the activities of Parliament as an institution and the individual honorable members. I particularly make provision for, uh, capitalize, for capitalizing the parliamentary vehicle loan scheme under which all members of parliament will access loan, financing uh, access loan financing for their vehicles to enhance their roles. I further commit funding of $3.8 million under the 2019 budget for enabling works uh, for commencement of the construction of the new parliament building, which will be sited in Mount Hamden here in Harare. For the audit office, an allocation of $6.9 million 
is proposed, Madam Speaker, ma'am. I now turn to revenue measures and incentives. Madam Speaker, ma'am, the revenue measures that I'm proposing seek to consolidate gains realized by productive sectors through extension of existing support facilities, increase in productive capacity, exports and import substitution levels, uh, uh, to provide relief to taxpayers, as well as enhance revenue through efficient efficiency in tax administration. The proposals further seek to institute demand management measures with a view to redirect use of scarce foreign currency to productive industries. Let me start, start with support to industry. In order to consolidate the gains realized by local industry, government will renew facilities that have expired, subject to set conditions, and in some cases expand the list of inputs and beneficiaries of rebate facilities as follows. One, uh, clothing manufacturers clothing manufacturers rebate. This is large-scale manufacturers. Here, here we, we want to include additional fabrics that are not uh, locally produced under the clothing manufacturers rebate with effect from 1 January 2019. On SMEs, in line with the TSP thrust of supporting sustainable SMEs, I propose to avail a ring-fenced manufacturers rebate facility subject to meeting prescribed conditions with effect from 1 January 2019. For the dairy industry, Madam Speaker, ma'am, we note that domestic production of raw milk remains lower than the requirements of, uh, of the local dairy industry. Hence, I propose to increase the ring fence milk powder requirements for 2019 with effect from 1 January 2019. On the baking industry, in order to reduce the cost of production, thereby minimizing price uh, escalation, particularly on bread, which is a basic household commodity, I propose to introduce duty-free importation of raw materials under a manufacturer's uh, rebate with effect from 1 January 2019. <laughs> on the agriculture industry, an issue regarding customs duty on fertilized eggs. In order to mitigate against potential shortage of poultry products as a result of the avian, avian influenza and restore viability of the industry, I propose to ring fence duty-free importation of fertilized eggs for the year 2019 with effect from 1 January 2019. Turning to the motor industry. In support of initiatives to improve the condition of cross-border luxury buses, I propose to extend the ring-fenced uh, suspension of duty on the outstanding quota of luxury buses by a further one year. Furthermore, in order to ease the transport challenges, I propose to ring-fence importation of 100 public service buses of a sitting capacity of at least 60 passengers at a reduced customs duty rate of 5%. These measures take effect from January 1, uh, 2019. Wine manufacturing industry. In order to su supplement uh, supply of locally produced raw wine, I propose to increase the excise duty-free ring-fenced import quota from 90,000 liters to 175,000 liters for a period of 12 months beginning 1 January 2019. On the fertilizer manufacturing industry, Madam Speaker, ma'am, in order to enhance competitiveness of locally manufactured fertilizer, I propose to ring fence duty-free importation of raw materials with effect from 1 January 2019 for a period of 12 months. Uh, I further propose to ring fence importation of 10,000 tons of ammonium nitrate fuel oil fertilizer under suspension of duty for a period of 12 months beginning 1 January 2019 in order to reduce the cost of inputs into production. I now turn to furniture manufacturers. Madam Speaker, ma'am, 
the furniture manufacturers rebate facility uh, support has attracted investment uh, from the region hence I propose to include additional beneficiaries under the facility furthermore in view of the increase in the product range I propose to include additional raw material with the effect from 1 January 2019 I now turn to the pharmaceutical manufacturers <laughs> Madam Speaker, ma'am, in recognition of the significance of the pharmaceutical manufacturing industry, government has already provided for a rebate of duty facility on essential raw materials uh, imported for manufacture by the industry. The facility has thus in assisted in the promotion of linkages with the packaging. Okay. Breaking news. This, this is boosting employment. The industry is in the process of registering new products. Hence, I propose to expand the list of essential raw materials for the manufacture under rebate of duty with the effect of from 1 January 2019. Notwithstanding assistance availed to the industry, retail prices of pharmaceutical products, in particular drugs for treatment of chronic ailments, have increased and are either quoted in US dollars or four times the same amount if payment is through electronic funds transfer or bond notes. The unscrupulous profiteering at the expense of patients who cannot afford uh, is inhuman, catastrophic, and deprives citizens of basic human rights as enshrined in the Constitution. Government will thus continue to prioritize allocation of foreign currency for purchase of raw materials in order to ensure availability of critical drugs. As a quid pro quo, pharma pharmaceutical manufacturers shall be required to publish the maximum recommended retail price agreed among manufacturers, wholesalers, and retailers. Whilst this measure is intended to provide transparency in the pricing of essential drugs, it should thus not be uh, misconstrued as price control. Government will, however, provide an oversight role in order to ensure that the above conditions are adhered to. Uh, let me turn to the issue of transparency and accountability in utilization of rebate facilities. Beneficiaries of rebate facilities availed by government will be required to present an annual report on the benefits achieved including but not limited to the following parameters incremental employment levels capacity utilization levels value of new investment growth in output and research and development initiatives this points in the direction of impact in terms of incentives that government is providing Failure to comply with the above will result in the immediate withdrawal of the facility and the rebated duty becomes due and payable. There has to be a stick. Let me turn to the tourism industry uh, on the suspension of duty on uh, specified uh, buses uh, for tour operators. In order to assist tour operators uh, capitalize their fleets, I propose to extend suspension of duty on 75 new buses of a carrying capacity of 8 to 55 passengers, including the driver. The facility will be availed for a period of 12 months beginning 1 January 2019. Madam Speaker, ma'am, I now turn to some revenue enhancing measures. The first one is an excise duty on cigarettes. The specific rate of excise duty does not relate to market developments since the price of cigarettes has, in some cases, increased by about 30%. I therefore propose to review excise duty on cigarettes to $25 per 1,000 sticks with effect from 1 December 2018. I now turn to customs duty on motor vehicles. Madam Speaker, ma'am, honorable members will be aware as well that government has over the years 
implemented demand management measures with a view to redirect usage of scarce foreign currency to productive sectors and productive industries. Such measures include adjustment uh, to the uh, customs duty regime and control of imported goods through the licensing system. Despite some, some success, government has, during the course of 2017 and 2018, witnessed a surge in the importation of non-productive goods, particularly motor vehicles. In order to redirect use of scarce foreign currency to the productive sectors of the economy, I propose that customs duty on motor vehicles be levied in foreign currency acceptable as legal tender, and this is with effect from 23 November 2018. <laughs> this measure will, however, this measure will, however, not apply on imports of commercial motor vehicles and vehicles for use by the physically uh, impaired uh, sections of a society that live with disability, that is. Furthermore, payment of customs duty in foreign currency will also apply on selected goods uh, whose list will, which list will be provided in due course. This measure will also apply on all import VAT and surcharge. Payment of tax in the currency of trade. Madam Speaker, ma'am, notwithstanding that companies are appointed as agents that collect revenue on behalf, on behalf of government, some companies are not remitting VAT in the currency of trade, taking advantage of arbitrage opportunities on the informal market. In order to contain such practices, I propose to compel companies that collect VAT in US dollars or any other currency to remit a VAT using the same mode of payment. <laughs> this measure will apply on all other taxes. Madam Speaker, ma'am, I now tend to excise duty on fuel. Current market developments have also distorted the fuel market. The country's fuel has become relatively cheaper compared to prices obtaining in the region, creating an arbitrage opportunity for local consumers and transiting vehicles. This arbitrage opportunity has partly contributed to the increase in consumption of fuel products with volumes for the period January to October 2018 amounting to $1.29 billion. The increase in consumption is clearly unsustainable considering that the available uh, foreign currency reserves have been shared among other critical priorities. I therefore propose to increase the excise duty on fuel by seven cents per liter for diesel uh, and petrol and 6.5 cents on, on I, I restate. I therefore propose to increase excise duty by seven cents per liter on diesel and paraffin and 6.5 cents on petrol to reduce the arbitrage opportunities. This measure takes effect from 1 December 2018. Tax dates on voluntary wound up companies. While some taxpayers have been uh, constrained by economic challenges, others have de deliberately chosen to evade or defer payment of taxes. In some cases, uh, taxpayers have voluntarily wound up companies and registered new establishments in order to avoid settling the outstanding tax obligations. Company directors are thus deliberately violating their fiduciary responsibility, hence are contributing to the, to the accumulation of un unpaid tax obligations. Such actions constitute negligence, perhaps fraud, and even abuse of authority. I therefore propose that directors and shareholders of a company that wound up voluntarily in order to avoid payment of the taxes be jointly and severally liable for the tax liability. On satellite broadcasting services, 
Madam Speaker, ma'am, technological uh, advancements have enabled foreign companies, uh, particularly uh, satellite broadcasters and e-commerce platforms, to provide local residents with services from offshore sources. This income is subject to tax, and the activity generating the income is actually paid from a source within Zimbabwe. For the avoidance of doubt, and in order to broaden the tax base, I propose to deem income earned by such non-resident service providers to be from a source within the country and liable to tax within the country. Yeah. Madam Speaker, ma'am, I now turn to some tax relief measures, beginning with personal income tax. In order to attract and retain skilled human capital and also cushion low-income taxpayers against rising prices of basic uh, goods, I propose to review uh, the tax-free threshold from the current $300 to $350 and further widen the tax bans from $351 to $20,000, above which income is taxed at the highest marginal tax rate of 45% down from 50%. I now turn to the intermediated money transfer tax. Madam Speaker, ma'am, consultations made with stakeholders indicated the need to continue to fine tune this transaction tax with a view to ease the cost of doing business. In this regard, I propose to provide for further exemptions uh, in, in terms of payment of this tax with effect from 1 January 2018. I now turn to the uh, export tax on unbeneficiated platinum. Government introduced a 15% tax on the exportation of unbeneficiated, unbeneficiated platinum with a view to compel mining companies to expeditiously transition towards beneficiation of the mineral. In view of the progress and commitments made by the PGM producers towards beneficiation, I propose to postpone ex the export tax to 1 January 2022. On the export tax on raw hides, Madam Speaker, ma'am, in order to generate foreign currency from the prevailing global export market opportunities, thereby maximizing the value of excess raw hides, I propose to exempt from export tax the sale of projected excess raw hides on a biannual basis with effect from 1 January 2019. I now turn to the issue of customs duty and VAT on sanitary wear. Yeah. Let them speak, amen. In order to cushion underprivileged women and girls uh, in the interim, while this local supply of, of sanitary wear improves, I propose to suspend customs duty for a period of 12 months, beginning... I propose to suspend customs duty for a period of 12 months beginning 1 December 2018. Furthermore, I propose to further exempt imports of sanitary wear from value-added tax. I, I now turn to the issue of suspension of duty on goods for use by physically challenged persons. In line with the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disability of 208, which promotes uh, uh, decent and dignified lives for such persons to achieve their full potential, I propose to suspend duty on goods used by the physically challenged person. <laughs> Such, such goods include wheelchairs, uh, talking calculators, uh, mobility white canes, and contact lenses, and special creams for those living with albinism, among others. 
government has already provided duty-free importation of, of sunscreen lotions, as I said earlier, hearing aids, braille computers, uh, uh, embossers, and also VAT, zero-rated uh, uh, wheelchairs, uh, literature products, braille computers, braille watches, among others. So these measures are an addition to what we're already doing. I now turn to uh, VAT on, uh, on statutory medical regulatory authorities. Madam Speaker, ma'am. Here I propose to exempt medical statutory bodies from the requirement to charge and remit VAT for the period of 209 to 30 November 2018. Medical statutory bodies would, however, be required to adhere with current legislative provisions with effect from 1 December 2018. Let me turn to withholding of tax on contracts. Uh, Madam Speaker, ma'am. In order to provide relief to schools that have accumulated tax arrears from failure to withhold tax, I propose to provide an exemption from withholding tax on contracts in, ret in, in retrospect for the period of six years ending 31 December 2017. I further propose to exempt the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe from the requirement to withhold 10% of amounts payable in cases where the recipient of interest accruing from Treasury bills failed to produce a tax clearance certificate during the period 1 February 2019 to 30 November 2018. Let me turn to the issue of exemption of non-residents non from withholding tax on contracts. I propose to exempt payments for non-resident individuals from the 10% withholding tax on contracts since non-resident persons are not compelled to file returns. Madam Speaker, ma'am, on the issue of road accident level, we propose as follows, or, or we, we note the following. What is the minimum requirement is that all motor vehicles should be covered under third party insurance. The benefits are, however, restricted to compensation of the third party's vehicle. Hence, remain obscure with a relatively low claims ratio. Consequently, premiums have largely been retained for the benefit of insurance companies. Hence, an opportunity for third-party insurance to also contribute towards expenses for accident vic victims uh, 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 thus uh, exists. I therefore propose to redirect 5% of third-party insurance cover to an accident compensation fund with effect from 1 December 2018. Madam Speaker, ma'am, I now turn to the standard scale of fines. Road traffic offenses are classified under levels one to three of the standard uh, scale of fines with a maximum monetary value of $30. The current fines, which should act as a, as a deterrent to criminal behavior, have not assisted in reducing such malpractices, mainly due to the low monetary values. In order to promote road safety culture by, by adhering to road traffic regulations, I propose that any person who commits such offenses be liable to fines of levels 8 to 10, which attract a maximum fine of $700 and imprisonment for a period of not, not exceeding 12 months, and this is with effect from 1 January 2019. Madam Speaker, ma'am, I now turn to some legislative amend amendments. Uh, the first is pertains to VAT payments. In order to reduce the burden of perpetual interest charges on taxpayers, I propose to amend the order of liquidation of VAT deaths uh, so that a priority is given towards settlement of the principal tax liability followed by uh, uh, penalty and interest, and this is with effect from 1 January 2019. On transfer pricing, Madam Speaker, Mayor, in order to promote compliance with the transfer pricing legislative requirements, 
I propose to introduce the following measures. Amend legislation to provide for penalties on a graduating scale for failure to adhere to stipulated requirements. Require taxpayers to submit annual returns uh, showing transactions entered between controlled and or associated enterprises. Provide for transfer pricing documentary requirements which will act as a guide to associated uh, enterprises in the, in the recording of transactions in, compli in compliance with the arm's length principle. And finally, uh, provide for the transfer pricing guidelines which will assist in the application, interpretation, and simplification of transfer pricing legislation. These measures take effect from 1 January 2018. 2019. I'll repeat. Let me turn to the payment basis for value added tax. Uh, Madam Speaker, ma'am, the value added tax legislation compels registered operators to account for tax on an invoice or payment basis. Registered operators that account for tax on an invoice basis are required to account for VAT accruing from both cash and credit sales after an invoice which indicates, indicates time of supply uh, has been issued. In order, to, uh, de in order to, to delay accounting for VAT on credit uh, sales, some registered operators deliver goods and perform services without issuing an invoice thereby circumventing the fact that a supply has been made. Registered operators thus deliver goods on the basis of delivery notes, thereby avoiding payment of output tax, notwithstanding that the same can be used to claim input tax. In order to facilitate accounting for VAT at the time of delivery of goods and services, I propose to amend the definition of time of supply to include the time goods and services are made available to the recipient. On additional routes for electronic cargo tra uh, tracking, uh, we, no we note the following, Madam Speaker, Ma'am. Uh, Honourable members will be aware that government implemented an uh, electronic cargo tra tracking system that uses electronic seals and transmitters to monitor transit cargo in order to mitigate the adverse effects of transit fraud. I therefore propose to gazette the additional routes in order to facilitate movement of petroleum products. Turning to maximum transit period, the customs and excise legislation provides that goods cleared for transit purposes should exit the country within three days from the date of entry for removal. Trucks carrying abnormal loads, however, are in most cases, not able to transit within the given time frames due to the law speed and other regulations that restrict the movement of trucks carrying up normal loads during the night. I, I therefore propose to extend the transit timeline for trucks carrying up normal loads from three to five days from the date of arrival at the port of entry, and this is with effect from 1 December 2018. Let me turn to the penalty for failure for pre-clear goods. Notwithstanding the introduction of pre-clearance of commercial cargo transported by road with, e with effect from 1 February 2018, commercial cargo transporters, uh, transporters and, and agents have, however, not been complying. Hence, some ports of entry have faced serious traffic congestion. I therefore propose to levy a fine equivalent to level 12 of the standard scale of fines on importers or agents that fail to pre-clear goods transported by road, and this will with effect from 1 December 2018. On the powers of customs officers to inspect residential property, we note the following, Madam Speaker, ma'am, and propose the following. I propose to amend legislation to authorize officers to access residential property for purposes of undertaking searches uh, where there is reasonable grounds 
to believe that a residential property is utilized for business purposes. This is with effect from 1 January 2019. On, on tax administration uh, and on the matter of, of the whistleblower facility, Madam Speaker, Ma'am, government in, in, in 2001 introduced the whistleblower facility to enable informants, informants to share information on such practices as, as, as tax avoidance and, and, and evasion by individuals and companies that comprise uh, compromised uh, tax uh, revenue collections. I propose to review the whistleblower facility to provide, among other measures, clarity on the nature of information that informants must supply before being entitled to a reward. On penalty uh, lodging model, in order to promote transparency in the administration of penalties for non-compliance, I propose to publish a penalty lodging model which informs taxpayers on the level of penalties, and this is with the effect from 1 January 2019. Let me turn to permissible deductions in respect of input tax. The VAT legislation compelled, compels VAT registered operators to obtain and, and retain any of the documentary proof listed on the schedule of appropriate documentation as confirmation that they are entitled to zero rate supplies of goods and services in order to facilitate refund of VAT input tax. The discretion has created an opportunity whereby registered operators, particularly those in the export business, uh, 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 submit stamped bills of entry and some of the documents listed as proof of export despite overwhelming evidence that the goods were not exported. In order to minimize abuse of the VAT system, I propose to compel registered operators to obtain and retain all the documentary proof prescribed in the regulations as confirmation that they were entitled to zero rate their supplies. On the tax administration assessment tool, as part of the uh, reform process, the International Monetary Fund through the IMF tax administration assessment tool, TEDAT initiative, conducted an assessment of the tax administration system with a view to identify its strengths and weaknesses. In order to address the weaknesses unearthed by an assessment of the tax administration system through the IMF TEDAT tool, thereby enhancing efficiency in tax administration, the Zimbabwe Revenue Authority will require to undertake the following initiatives. This is to enhance Zimbra Information Technology System to ensure that information held in the taxpayer's registration database is accurate, adequate, and reliable. In order to ensure accuracy, reliability, and traceability of taxpayers, by the first half of 2019, Zimbra systems should be linked to the National Registration Database, Company Registration Database, Deeds Office, Zimstat, National Social Security Authority, Investment Agency, ZimDev, among others. I must put in place a compliance risk management framework to enable the detection of sectors of the economy with greatest risk of non-compliance in order to ensure that commensurate tax administration effort is applied. And they must carry out routine, uh, 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 routine activities uh, to identify unregistered taxpayers. And finally, they must develop a tax incentive uh, monitoring and evaluation framework to, in order to facilitate the management of time tax expenditures as well as to inform cost-benefit analysis of tax expenditures by Treasury on an annual basis, and this is with effect from 1 January 2019. Madam Speaker, ma'am, I now turn to the issue of re international re-engagement and external debt resolution. A crucial meeting with cooperating partners and international financial institutions was held on the 10th of October 2018 in Bali, Indonesia, over the country's debt and area strategy. A follow-up meeting was held in Livingstone on, on 13 and 14 November 2018, in addition to various bilateral meetings. <clears throat> on areas clearance, On areas, uh, Madam Speaker, ma'am, 
The debt and arrears clearance roadmap will entail clearing arrears of the African Development Bank of 608 million, the World Bank <coughs> Uh, at more than one, for, at one more than 1.4 billion, and the European Investment Bank uh, of, uh, with a debt of 308 million. Besides debt and arrears clearance, the International Committee expects to see Zimbabwe judiciously implement its TSP as well, uh, in order to move on a path for sustainable and inclusive growth and development. To facilitate uh, gravitating towards normalizing relations with the IMF and other financial institutions such as the World Bank, among others, we are in discussions with the IMF in terms of intensifying or re-engagement re with them. Madam Speaker, ma'am, government will want the nation to appreciate that re-engagement with, with the international financial institutions is key to unlocking of new development finance. On international relations, Government is stepping up outreach and engagement within the international community with the objective of normalizing and strengthening relations and, taking, and in taking the right, its rightful place in the community of nations. The 2019 budget is providing support to capacitate the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Trade in this endeavor. On the aid coordination architecture, as highlighted in the TSP, Treasury is in the process of reviewing and realigning the aid coordination architecture in order to improve development cooperation effectiveness. Hence, going forward, development cooperation will be anchored upon four mutually supportive pillars. One, Zimbabwe development cooperation policy. Two, development cooperation strategy and procedures manual. Three, joint performance assessment framework. And finally, number four, development cooperation management information system. Madam Speaker, ma'am, in conclusion, this budget should mark a turning point towards realizing the country's vision 2030, as austerity will lead us to prosperity. To quote the philosopher Immanuel Kant, we are not rich by what we possess, but by what we can do without. <laughs> I now commend the 2019 uh, national budget as detailed in the accompanying uh, budget statement uh, to this august house and lay on the table the estimates of expenditure, also known as the blue book. I thank you. I thank you all for listening. <laughs>